Do you struggle losing tennis matches to players who are worse than you? Well, if so, don't worry, don't feel bad. It's an incredibly widespread problem. In fact, most tennis players struggle losing to somebody who doesn't have the same skills as they do. And in this lesson, I'm gonna expose why that is, and more importantly, give you the solution. So if that sounds exciting to you, do me a favor and click the like button, and let's dive right into it. In today's lesson, we're gonna do a little bit of a case study. This is me on the other side, and I was working with a student who's, I would say, a strong 4-0 player. He's trying to get up to 4-5, and he has a lot of great tools in his toolbox. Very talented athletically, and very, very smart player. And recently we spent some time together on the courts, and this is kind of an analysis session at the beginning of our time together where I played some points against him. And I was purposefully just kind of targeting the middle of the courts with weak shots and just seeing what he would do. And worth noting, I'm in kind of in the middle of my foot injury here, so like I can't move. I'm using a continental grip most of the time, and I'm just kind of pushing the ball back in the middle of the courts. And he was absolutely struggling. And this is not uncommon. In fact, this is incredibly common. When somebody doesn't have a very traditionally strong game, when they don't swing very aggressively, when they don't give much pace, and they kind of just loop the ball into the middle or slice it or push it into the middle of the court, a lot of players struggle just missing routine shots and end up beating themselves. And I want to be very clear here and identify the problem. This person has taken lots of lessons. He spent a lot of time working on his technique. He's very athletic. Frankly, he's a, he's a really gifted amateur tennis player. All that work on technique wasn't winning him points. And he's also very smart. He's studied tactics and patterns. He knows exactly what good tennis is and what good tennis is not. And yet it didn't keep him for a 15 or 20 minute period of time losing point after point and game after game to me as I was kind of hobbling around and just pushing the ball into the middle of the court. So what is the solution? Well, let's dive a little bit deeper. We've identified that losing to weak players who can't move and just kind of slice and push the ball back, it's not from lack of technique. It's not from lack of knowledge or tactics or strategy. It's from lack of correct training. Can I hit my best shots in a match in the right place at the right time. And that has to be trained. Just because you watch some videos on tactics or strategy doesn't mean it's magically, magically gonna happen. And just because you crush a whole bunch of forehands and backhands in practice doesn't mean it's magically gonna happen during a match against somebody who is just pushing the ball back. So step number one with this student was pick a high percentage directional rally. And by the way, shout out to uh, Kevin Garlington from Total Tennis Domination on that side. He and I were coaching together uh, with this student. So we're hitting cross court here and our student is just simply targeting cross courts and his goal is to recreate the same swing speed, the same spin, the same height, the same trajectory, the same everything. And here's the kicker, here's the key. His goal is to do that eight times in a row and hit his target. So as he and I are rallying, he has the, the building pressure of number one, number two, number three, number four. And as he gets to six, seven, it's like, oh man, I, I gotta make sure I put this ball in the right spot with the right swing. So we're monitoring his swing speed, his spin, his height, his depth, everything. And we are specifically purposefully challenging him, training him to recreate the same quality shot over and over again. So this is not just about hitting a million balls. It's about hitting eight balls really well to a specific spot for a specific purpose and then training our students' ability to repeat that again and again. It's not just about having pretty looking swings. It's about using those swings in a very specific purposeful way. And so you can do this drill at home. You can also give yourself the challenge of having to hit past the service line over on the other side. So you can add a depth element to this as well. And you can do this with your volleys, your forehand, your slice, your serve, everything. So it starts here. And if you want more ideas like this, make sure you check out the video. If you haven't already that we published right before this one, we gave more pressure adding ideas during your training sessions. So layer number one is add some pressure and still uh, manage your swing speed, manage the quality of your swing while that pressure builds. And then st step number two is now put in decision-making, add decision-making into the process. What we've done here, 
Uh, Kevin set up this drill. He did an amazing job guiding Phil through this. And what he did was set up some areas for where the ball might bounce. Anything deep and in the corner, we instructed Phil, you're going to hit that cross court, period. He was really stuck in his own head. He had so much information rattling around in his brain that during our points when he and I played together, it, it looked like he was just hitting random shots and there was no structure or purpose behind his shots. So we gave him one. Anything deep, he was going to hit cross court, end of story. Anything in the middle of the court, he could choose to go either direction. And then anything that landed inside or short of these cones here, he had to hit down the line. That's it. If you just do that in your singles play and you hit confident swings, you're going to be very successful. And so watch him go through the drill here. I'm just tossing balls underhand. And so anything that lands deep in the corner, he's targeting cross court. Anything in the center of the court, he can choose whatever target he wants, but he's going to go for a deep corner. And then anything short of the cones, like this shot right here, he was instructed all those shots go down the line. I don't have time in this video to go into the reasons why and the geometry and, and all that all that kind of stuff. We've done lots of videos on those topics, but we, we've just simply given him a structure to follow. And now this is his decision-making training so that he can identify where is the ball, where should that corresponding ball go. And so this is just repetitive training under a little bit of pressure. As he got a little bit better at picking the right shots, we started saying, okay, now you need to make every shot in the right spot with a confident swing. So we're layering levels of challenge. Level challenge number one was just hit a quality swing with a little bit of pressure at it. And then layer two was, okay, hit the right target at the right time. And layer three was the right shot at the right time with pressure added. This is how you train yourself to be a competitive athlete and deal with uh, pressure as you play against an opponent. So you'll notice now as he's moving around hitting shots, like he's, he's looking like a good tennis player now. If you compare that to how he looked when he was playing points against me at the beginning of the day, it's completely different. We'll probably go ahead and put a little bit of side-by-side -side action. Like here he's moving, he looks like he has intention, uh, there's a lot of focus and purpose behind everywhere he moves and every time that he swings the racket. And this is how you can start to develop yourself into a competitive athlete as a tennis player. If this has already been helpful and an eye-opener to you, do me a favor and just click the like button. It really helps these videos a lot. It helps more tennis players receive this type of coaching, which I, I really appreciate a lot. Thank you so much. So at the end of our coaching session, we played some more points after we did the directional confidence training, after we did the decision-making training and kind of merged those together. Here's me playing with that same student and I'm doing the same approach, like a half speed serve, just kind of mostly hitting shots to the middle of the court, some backspin, like just kind of pushing the ball, pretty slow, easy pace. And he looked like a completely different player. This is somebody who has the same athleticism, has the same strokes, not once did we touch his swing technique on his ground strokes or his volleys or anything else. He has the same knowledge about tactics and strategy, but throughout the course of several hours of training, we narrowed his focus to a couple core things. Targets, swing uh, speed, confidence, direction, decision making, and it's just about narrowing your focus to those things. So if you've developed, if you've spent years and years developing your swing technique and in practice you play phenomenal, but in matches you lose to people that just don't have the same skill or ability you do, I promise you this type of approach, this type of training will make a massive difference for you. It's not about practicing more or training harder. It's about the right practice. It's about the right training. And then you can start to merge together or fuse together your practice self and your match self so that your best tennis can come during matches and not just when it doesn't matter during practice. If you've been paying attention at all over the last couple of videos, then you've noticed a theme. Most tennis players have what I like to call a split personality on the court. They have one type of persona when they practice, which is cool, calm, confident, aggressive, assertive, nice and loose and free. But then when they play matches, a totally different person emerges. And this person is tense and tight and tentative 
makes it very, very difficult to play good tennis. Don't feel badly if this sounds really familiar. It's the case for most tennis players. And hopefully over the last couple of videos, you've seen what the solution is. And this is it in a nutshell. We talked about this in a previous video. Comfort zone, learning zone, panic zone. If you stay only in your comfort zone with what you're used to, you will not develop as a competitor. If you only stay in your panic zone, you will also not develop as a competitor. And unfortunately, a lot of players jump back and forth between comfort zone, it's practice, no challenge, and panic zone, matches. We're psychologically just kind of freaking out, trying to deal with the nerves, but can't deal with it. So there's no improvement. So hanging out in the learning zone, just remember, this is the big key and this is what you should be striving for yourself. And I hope over the last couple of videos, you've received some really practical, actionable things that you can do to actually make that a reality. Unfortunately, most tennis players, when they are approached with the learning zone, when they start to leave their comfort zone, this is their response. And I can just promise you right now, if you want to be a poor competitor, this should be your reaction when you feel pressure, when you feel tension and anxiety during match play. This response, trying to trick yourself or basically fool yourself into thinking, oh, I'm not nervous, I'm not scared, I, I, I'm not worried about what's going to happen here, that's going to keep you stuck in that split personality rut where you have one persona during practice and another one in matches. Great competitors actually welcome that learning zone. And again, hopefully over the last few videos, you've received some really practical ways that you can do that. I want you to know though, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I've actually created a complete comprehensive program that goes step by step into stroke technique, into mental toughness, into strategy and tactics, and shown how to bring together those two personas and make them merge. So that whether you're playing practice tennis or you're playing match play, you can actually feel confident and assertive and hit the shots that you know you can hit. How nice would it be to have this character be your match play character as well as your practice hitting character? That's what Tennis Fusion does. And I don't have time right now to go into all the details. I just wanted to let you know that it's coming and I'm excited about it and I hope that you are too because this is a problem that's gone on long enough for tennis players and I can't wait to show you how to fuse together your two split personalities into one so you can play the best tennis of your life during matches. So until I have time to let you know about the rest of the program, thank you so much for your support over these last couple of videos. All your comments, the likes, the support, it's been so encouraging to me. So thank you for that. Stay tuned for more details. Until then, Take care.